The news is awash with every minute detail, steps, missteps of a possible referendum. In addition, we've seen some robust campaigns for the various by-elections we've had in this country since 2017. And we've also seen every politician preparing for 2022. Presidential hopefuls are declaring their interest, telling us every day what they will do for this country. But none of them is focusing on the process that will get them there. The election. How will it be conducted? Who will conduct it? Under what circumstances? And whether the process will be free, fair and verifiable? I'm talking about the stepchild in our political conversations. Electoral reforms. Let me take you down memory lane to the Supreme Court of Kenya ruling in the first presidential election petition of 2017. The ruling that raised some serious questions on how the electoral management body conducted the election. They spoke of irregularities and illegalities in the manner in which the election was conducted, so much that it affected the outcome of the election to the extent that the result was not verifiable and the process was neither free nor fair. Then came the then NASA's irreducible minimums to the IBC before the repeat presidential election, in which they raised serious questions on issues such as transmission of results. We've seen protests in this country over election results and the management body itself. Remember Machozi Mondays? We even came very close to the brink in 2007-2008, all because of an election. We then had Justice Johan Krigler come to the country to help us work out reforms to our electoral system to solve this stubborn question in this nation. Solutions were proposed, many of which we promised to abide by and implement. We have now seen one commission after another since we attained multi-party democracy, up to four different sets of leadership at the helm, and now rumors of a fifth. Of that, we shall see. Now let's even come back a little closer to the present day. Remember the nine-point agenda of the handshake in 2018? Point number four about divisive elections, which said, and I quote, every five years the country almost comes to a standstill during elections, end quote. But yet how much energy, effort, discussion have you seen deployed to this issue of electoral reforms? How much of it is in the BBI bill? As always, we will leave this issue of electoral reforms to the very last minute. And even then, most of what we may see will be a clamor to change the commissioners as opposed to routing out the whole system, overhauling it and putting in a new one. The referendum is neither here nor there for now, but either way it seems we're going into another major election without having addressed the issues that were so well elucidated during the presidential petition at the Supreme Court. So we're now going into another major election with a commission which can still conduct it, but is still not at optimal performance level. On the verge of getting four new commissioners, a commission without a substantive CEO and whose replacement is currently held up in a litigation process, without departmental heads who have since been redeployed with only acting heads now at the helm. And now, less than two years to the next election, we are appointing new commissioners, a whole three years after after the predecessors resigned? This rush to try and put a band-aid over this situation is quite curious, creating some sort of emergency or crisis when we had all the time in the world to fix it. It is curious at best, intentional at worst, and it brings to mind the saying that the system is not broken. It was made to work this way. You see, we only focus on elections in this country, which are in and of themselves not the ultimate yardstick of democracy. True electoral reforms, true democracy, is what happens between elections to make the outcome of the election a true reflection of the will of the people. Anything else is mere window dressing. And that is my take tonight. <laughs>